Chapter 20 About a month later in the humid, sometimes mild climate of the land of Sarasward was the twin kingdoms, kingdoms of Osolo and Epuel. In this time of unrest there, the feral priest there, who founded it upon the twin aspects of nature, was affected only a little. Their elf leader, Grahadion, brother of Thuzetius and Hegevro's father, was a very old and wise leader among them and treated the human cities with respect and nostalgia. For as long as the people could honestly remember, all was well, for the most part. Crime was minimal in this place, as the cities were chartered by Ascadia City to house many brave and capable guards and militia, but surely things were happening under the guards' attention. It was afternoon. The skies were a bit dark, but not particularly cloudy. Both cities were surrounded by trees with a large path in between the north exit of the south city and the south exit of the north one. The woods were guarded by feral beasts, larger, more dangerous animals, put there by the elves. The citizens all had wristbands made of extra hardened leaves that made it where the feral beasts did, did, did not attack them as they passed from city to city. On the north outskirts of Oslo, where the trees meet, there stood two mysterious figures robed in dark gray robes, bandaged in the face completely, save for their eyes. One was carrying a giant old tome held roughly between his right arm and waist, as it was huge. It was covered in some dirt and the pages were dirty, the man constantly cleaning it. Just then to the south of Ebuel, in the woods, of, in the woods, in Drero, the feral priest in charge of a sweep daily to check for disturbances, notices the forest is quiet, too quiet. He is with a single guard, dressed in the attire of the Escadia city guard. They follow all the paths up where rope lights hang everywhere calling out to the feral beasts, but none are around. Perhaps they are to the end they are in the north, says Andrero in a soft voice. The guard looks with haste and asks with a sarcastic smile. This is odd, is it not? The two make it in between the two cities, called the Great Pathway going both east and west, and make their way away from the Oslo path and into the others. The stillness and quiet is chilling, as they are making the only sounds in what is usually noise a, in it, what is usually a noisy place. Finally, they quickly walk back to Oslo to report to Grayidion about it. What they find is shocking. Hundreds of people are, are lying dead, every light on, and no signs of a fight. The guards waste the guard wastes no time and makes his way to Ebuel slowly, running, yelling. I shall check the other settlement you find Rahidion. And Drero searches the people as he walks by them for any clues. The wall is faint. Treachery is afoot this day. And an old nemesis returns. And Drero walks into the chamber house where Drahidion lives and finds him standing by his chair with a large book and his advisor named Dion, a human diplomat. And Drero quickly tells him of what they have seen and experienced. Surely it cannot be so bad, priest, but tell me, who are you again? As, ask uh, Drahidion. My name is Andrero, sir. Sorry for the confusion, responds Andrero. <coughs> Drahidion slams the large dirty book on his fine table and reads a passage from, aloud, from it aloud. And as he does, strange things happen. Noises are heard from all over town and dark shadows moving like snakes and black smoke move in the room and Drero is scared and asks what is going on it was then that Dion finally spoke and said go back outside and Drero and you will see for yourself and Drero walks out to see everyone getting up some still down but most up just standing in place it is still quiet and Drero senses that something is not quite right and runs and makes his way makes way to the southern settlement to find the guard he was with checking on all the people. Andrero immediately talks to someone asking, are you all right? Is everything fine here? The man looks at him earnestly and says, I'm a bit tired, but yes, I'm fine. 
and Drero looks around and notices that nothing is really out of the ordinary in Nebuel. He goes back to Drahedion and finds no one in the room but a noise coming from the large wardrobe in there. Bangs and the voice yelling muffled, help me whoever you are. And Drero opens it up to find Drahedion. Dazed and he says, someone knocked me out with a giant book and locked me in here. And Drero looks surprised and says, sir, I was just in here talking to you. And Dion, Drahedion looks down and said, no, Dion is gone. They killed him, the poor man, and took his corpse off with him. Treachery is afoot. The mysterious men left and before they, and, and before the, so they killed all of the feral beasts. And as Andrero and Drahedion would soon find out, Oslo was now not safe. As night came to the south town, had a as night came, the south town had a meeting to try to sort out what had happened. But the only clues were that Andrero ex were what Andrero experienced. All were baffled. The archmages in White Tower had been messages by magical birds by this time only allowing couriers by horseback. Also, White Tower was made a dwelling for mages only, mages only, since the heart of eternity was returned. Draedion was thinking, of, thinking how much help he needed from his brother right now. The next day, Draedion gives Andrero a letter sealed in a leather bag with other notes collected from witnesses. He orders him to send it to his brother in Scadia City. He would have moved from White Tower to a home in the lower parts of the city, below the mountain it is built upon. Dradian requests aid in investigating the incident and more guards, if possible, and if possible, the aid of the Dusk Walkers. Morning has come, and the last orc village of Yanor in the Jagged Mountains. Dane protests his defeat among the other orcs. He, however, has heard rumors of magic coming out of control in the land and struggles inside. If clinging to his old ways, he would never join up with human forces. Hear me, orcs and barbarians of Yanor. We have stood since the first epoch against all who would seem to overwhelm us. Yet we are still here, screams Dane as he strokes his chin. All there start to get anxious. Some raising their spears and weapons in the village, in the village fire in the center of the dwelling. We all lived in peace with the humans and elves to the south for ages, because of what they did for us in the last great war. However, times are becoming a strain. They must join us now or die. Yelling erupts from all corners of Yanor. His crude barricade sh shaking like Kendall. We will never be elves. We will never be men. We will never be defeated again, yells Dane once again. Everyone is proud and in, and in an uproar. There are orcs sharpening wood and impelling pigs to roast on the fire alive. The most feared fighting force in all of Esketi is defeated and bitter. Their time will come again, and they know this. They get information by killing couriers and taking notes and supplies back to Dane in the village. A lot has been said in these papers. Mostly how they themselves were defeated and praised, praises for it. They made the orcs very angry. Dane claimed that they would attack again, but this time planned in every aspect from the beginning of the beginning. The orcs were not thinkers, Dane was, and he was ready to launch his next attack on his human and elf allies to the south of Sarasward. The orcs do not have intent to rule. They seek only to undermine and take what is not theirs by right. They are chaotic, but there is a scheme to their chaos, though it is hard to see, even when their attacks were at their peak. Two orc scouts lie hidden in between the fork and the road near Yanor. One of them sees, one of them, one of them says to the other, "What will they do about Hegarul?" The other one snarls and says, death, I suppose, maybe worse. They both begin to crackle and the, <laughs> they both begin to cackle and laugh, and the courier is heard speeding up on horseback. 
Arrows fly. The horse is killed. The courier is slung off and struggles with the orcs. The two orcs. They take the courier to Dane, grabbing him one on each arm and dragging him to the fire. What is so important that you would travel by night to orc lands, human? Dane said with a smile, turning away and walking beside the flames and into the shadows. Please, Master Orc, this message is so dire, a danger to all of Skadia. A look of seriousness comes to Dane. He grabs the leather bag, however, and throws it in the high fires, all of, all of them laughing. The courier has a look of dread and yells, No! And it is then that Dane uses one of the pig pokers to stab him in the stomach. The man limps to his right side, blood covering the wood, but survives and is kept as a prisoner there in, the, in, in their camp. The orcs even patch him up and get information out of him. The man thinks to himself in his wooden enclosure, I must get to Escadia City. Just then Dane with his orcs says, let it burn. The dire situation of the world does not concern us, for it has turned its back on us. We shall do the same. One orc yells, yeah, and puts another flawed pig in the fire. The orcs have made it clear this night that they do not wish to help in the slightest, at least not yet.